All right, so this one is a very interesting one. This is literally batch 1A. This is the first batch and the first iteration of it, of Sagamore uh, tequila finish. And it's finished for, I believe it said, three to six months in extra Añejo barrels. Okay. So we're talking it's tequila that was finished for three years. Yes. So um, I've obviously opened this before. This is Logan's first time. But uh, there's, a, there's a lot to take in, and there's a lot of interesting stuff with this whiskey. So I'm excited. I believe it. Let's dive so, in. This keel finish is, is immediately... There's a ton of lemon on it. Mm -hmm. Like, there's lemon, there's lime. Like a meringue pie, almost. I can't tell if it's more of a key lime pie or more of a lemon meringue kind of pie thing, but... Which we're talking more tropical regions, so this doesn't yes. make sense. Yes. There's still the brown sugar and caramel sweet notes of the whiskey. Yeah, it's interesting that on the nose it picked up citrusy notes instead of picking up um, sort of like a like a, more tequila. Agave and notes, all that, like yeah. Agave. But one thing that is worth pointing out too is that while citrusy notes can come from a rye, they don't come from Sagamore. Mm -hmm. Sagamore is, is, to my knowledge, MGP sourced and is, again, more reminiscent of, like, the George Dickles and the, uh, you know, the other, MG, like, yeah. the, uh, the Old Scouts. Yeah. And, the, like, you know, Smooth Ambler rye, yeah. where it has more, more of those herbal, floral, sort of, um, like, like, greener, green notes, too. Yeah. This is more reminiscent of that. So the fact that the citrus comes into it tells me that it has to be from the tequila barrel, which uh, is interesting yeah. for it to pick that up. Yeah, because typically the only ryes that pick up citrus are usually Canadian ryes. The Alberta but Premium picks up so much of that. There's a ton of citrus that is the that. that is by far the most citrusy rye I've ever had. But this is reminiscent of that, but it doesn't pick a up orange. A little bit, yeah. It picks up lemon and lime. Lemon and the lime, a little bit of agave for sure. But it's still kind of sweet. It's like the, the agave notes. Yeah. They're still kind of sweet. It's almost, again, like an agave nectar versus agave itself. And I feel like you get a little bit of that youthful breadiness, not in a negative way, but I feel like you get right. a little bit of youthful breadiness. I mean, Sagamore's only aged, I think, four to five years, yeah. so it wouldn't surprise me. Oh, yeah, that's definitely it's, tequila finished. But it's not overpowering by any means. No, you not still at all. get a, you still it's still it's a rye with some tequila notes, not a tequila with rye notes. Like yeah, some finished ryes are Angel's Envy. Oh, Angel's Envy tastes like a rum with a couple rye notes versus the other way around. Where this, yeah. this is this is um, Angel's Envy should take notes because this is finished rye done right. Yeah, where so, it picks it's reminiscent of what it was finished in versus the other way around. But again, you get yeah. the sort of dill. You get the rye spice up front. You dill, get, rosemary. I almost get bay leaf. You get some of the oak spice up front. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, because you don't get that in regular Sagamore. Even in the double oak, I didn't get so much oak spice. Mm. I think that comes from the fact that you're getting some of the oak from the Sagamore, but you're also getting some of the oak from extra Añejo. I think it's from the extra Añejo because, well, uh, because again, it would almost be like, it wouldn't be oak spice, you'd start picking up some of the sweeter notes. Yeah. Uh, well, tequila itself also has some natural spice to it, too. Right. And maybe it's that. Like, it's it like the, be. the combination it, of like it, the bitterness and the yeah, spice. Yeah, it, it almost blends in with the oaky notes. Yeah. Just because, it almost amplifies it versus creating its own note. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy that I'm enjoying this because after the last, like, excursion I had with tequila here... I couldn't even look at a, an empty bottle of tequila without And yeah, this is not, it. it's not tequila forward at all. No. You don't get any of the, the pure agave notes. You get some, you get a little bit of agave, but again, it's sweet. Yeah. It's, it literally tastes more like an agave nectar than a tequila. Right. Yes. It's. You don't get any of the citrusy kind of notes on the palate. I get a little bit of lime, but that's about it. I can see. And that's on the finish. 
Okay, on the finish, I could see that. In the palette, you don't really get any no. of it at all. The palette, it's, it's definitely... Sagamore is a very... Um, I call it a bitier ride, but there's a easy, there's a better way to say that. It's mm -hmm. where like um, all those again sort of fresh green notes are very prominent right. and they're very powerful. Right. And that lends itself. I think that is what makes this as successful as it is. Where the Angel's Envy ride likely isn't that powerful and it's at a lower proof. Right. But the but this ride, it's able to overcome the the fact that it had months in a barrel of something completely different and you so it's it it basically um i think that is the reason that the tequila notes don't mask it it's mm -hmm. just too powerful of a of like the, the sort of green notes for it to completely go away mm -hmm. and i think i think that well that one that tells me that with how good this was sagamore seems to be a pretty good candidate for finished fries where I want to try their other distillers collects and see how they are. Because they do a cognac one, they do a rum one. I would definitely be interested in that. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, again, we're both pretty sure that this is sourced from MGP, and I'm still mm -hmm. convinced MGP makes the best rise that I've had. Yes, that definitely helps their cause. Yes. And uh, Sagamore's been around a while, so I think that that's just their thing, is that they... They're trying to be one of those ones that they source it, but they experiment with what they do with it. Mm. Let's have and a I'd be okay with that because this is really good. Let's have a look, see real okay. quick. Lawrence Distilled Burg in Indiana, it is MGP. Yeah, it is MGP. <laughs> Lawrence, what? Lawrence, Lawrenceburg, Indiana? It just said distilled in Indiana. Uh, That's all you have to hear. There's really no other distilling companies in Indiana. <laughs> right. But this is like, like, I've said this already, but this is just finished ride done right. It is. This, like, this is solid. And, you know, uh, if anyone's watching this, they see this and they are tempted to try it but are scared away from hearing tequila, don't be. Because it does not, it, 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 it's, it's reminiscent. It takes the best qualities of tequila yes. as anything. It doesn't, it doesn't taste like a tequila. No. It yeah, it picked up it picked up what it needed to. And it didn't it didn't pick up anything that could overpower or lessen the lessen the complexity or anything like that. Exactly. It's so seventy bucks for this, yay or nay? Seventy bucks. Seventy bucks. I would buy in bucks. other states I've seen it at like sixty five. So that's this is right around MSRP. Um, at 70 bucks, I would not be upset at the first bottle I bought of it. I question if I would buy another bottle of it. Right. I think of the finishes that they make, I would buy the double oak first, which is only like 55. Then I would buy this. Any other ones, I'd have to try it and see if, I, if it speaks to me as much as this one does. This one I would consider repurchasing. Right. But I don't know, just knowing the other spirits they've done for these finishes, I don't know that any of them would speak to me like this one does. I and I have developed the taste for tequila. Yeah. But again, this is this just tastes like it's done right. I it makes me wonder if the other ones can can work this well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I do want to try the rum one because I've been trying to find a rum finish whiskey in general that resonates with me and I haven't found one yet. Have you tried the Redemption yet? No, I passed try? on it. I've heard good things though. Might be worth a try. If you, if, if going into Irish, the Tullamore Dew. Is Tullamore Dew rum finished? They have a rum finish. I know that Teeling does one as they well. They have a Caribbean cask, yeah. Huh. It's I know that... Tullamore Dew XO. Okay, because I know that Teeling small batch is rum, rum cask finished. And I've been meaning to get into it, but I wanted to try that before I bought it because mm -hmm. they're a new they're a new distillery, so that's like kind of a hit or miss. But I've heard nothing but good things about Teeling, so there's that at least. Right. But I think I'm fifty fifty on whether I repurchase this. It would depend this would be one of those things where 
it'd depend on if there's something else in the store. And if I were itching to buy something, this is here, I would have no qualms buying it again. I feel like you finishing the bottle is going to determine whether it's worth another bottle or not for you. Right. But this is also one of those ones where I have to be in a mood for it. Yes. That's how I am with Rise in general. So that I think that's what plays into this. Because when it comes to Rise, this this is one of the better ones I have, I think. I could, I could wow. easily agree with that. Well, but, that's not including the Jack Daniels. Yeah, scenario. but that's also gone now, so. Now it is, yeah. But, oh, I was going to say, this isn't my favorite rye I've ever had. Finished rye, definitely. Um, Sagamore product, I don't know, because again, that double oak is really good. But, and I, I'm kicking myself, I could have gotten that for 50 bucks in Delaware. Had I known how much I would have liked the Sagamore stuff, I probably would have snagged more when I was yeah, down there. Yeah. But, I'm not disappointed with anything I purchased, because even that Willet, I traded that away for... The foolproof store pick, mm -hmm. 1792, and the Buffalo Trace store pick, fifth. Mm -hmm. So, let's see. Neither of which I'm disappointed in having. Oh, I still no. wish that I had the Buffalo Trace store pick that my buddy has. I think it's barrel pick 173, something like that. That the tasting notes are great nerds. Because that sounds really good. It's it sounds like it would be reminiscent of getting that kosher wheat. Except I hate grape nerds. <laughs> I hate artificial grape. You're objectively wrong. I hate artificial grape. Understandable. Do you like grapples or grapples? Do you know what those are? I do not know what those they are. They are apples that look like apples and taste like grapes. I'd be interested in trying one. You know because what I have every had? once in a while, when, when, when my dad, my little brother, and I were going out to New Jersey, when my dad was dating my stepmom, and we would stop at, uh, he would stop at the Wegmans in uh, Allentown on the way out, because we lived in Harrisburg, they lived yeah. in North Jersey. And, you know, we'd grab a snack or whatever. He would grab flowers for her. And then he, we would also grab a four-pack of grapples. Because my dad loves them. And when my little brother and I tried them, I don't know how much, I don't remember how much of a fan he was, but I really liked them. I don't know what was weird that I tried that I did really like though. Cotton yeah. candy grapes. Did you hear what I said? No. Yeah. I haven't tried it yet. I really do not want to. Understandable, but yeah, the cotton candy grapes those are so funky. It, it's kind of disturbing how much they taste well, like. I had something that I tried that I didn't think I would like, and so at Walmart you can get those like sparkling water things that are like the 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 ones that aren't sweetened with sugar, like they're like the potassium whatever they are. Yep. Their fla those flavors, like I hate Lacroix and all those kinds of things because again they taste like you took a single Skittle and dissolved it in seventy five gallons of water and said. Here, this is flavored. But this one actually tastes spot on to whatever flavor it is. And they have like cotton candy. They have like like red, white, and blue pop. They have the fruit ones that I really like because I like the Fuji apple. And I like, um, you have a peach one that's good. They have a, a lime one that I actually really like and I didn't think I was gonna like that one. I don't but know. those super sweet ones, it's nice because they taste like they're super sweet. They give you almost like that, that sugar fix. But they don't have sugar. Is they're this? not great for you, but they don't have sugar, so they're better than that. Are these the, uh, is it like that ice brand or whatever? They're similar, but they're the Walmart version, and they're bigger. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I have some in my fridge. You can see what I'm talking about. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look. I bring, I'll, I'll get like seven of them, and I'll bring them to work mm -hmm. every day. But back to the second more, just for a moment. That's, we tend to go on a lot of tangents. We do. But um, for the most part, they're on topic, so I can't really complain. Um, but this is. See why I was pleasantly surprised by this? Considering oh, I was basically yeah. buying it for 10 bucks, I was like, this was a no brainer to try it. There's oh, no way yeah. I was going to try this any other way. But looking back, I'd have kicked myself if I didn't. Right. Because, again, this is a bottle that, like, I'm going to enjoy drinking this bottle, and then when it's gone, I will be a little sad that I won't have another. 
but because they're gonna do other finishes. Yeah. It's like the the um the Thomas S. Moore. Mm. Some of those finishes we might see again, but they have other experiments in line too. So I don't know what we're gonna see and what we won't see. Speaking of Thomas S. Moore, I think you made the right call being the Chardonnay finish. Chardonnay and the Cab were the two good ones. They were all good, but I think that the Chardonnay was the best. I I think I have to agree to my own taste that that Cab was really good. It was the really port good. The Port one was good, but I'm just discovering that Port finished bourbons aren't my thing. The, yeah. Because the, the, the closest to really liking one I've had has been the Bowman. Yeah, so far. I, I still want to... I still want to try a, a higher proof Angel's Envy. I really, really want to get my hands on a single barrel of that or the cask strength. I just have a hard time justifying 200 fucking dollars for right. Angel's Envy cask. And, the, and I can't justify splitting the bottle for 100 bucks. Like, no. even if we go three ways, it's like 70 bucks a piece, and that's a lot of money to not get that much yeah. whiskey and not know if you're going to like it. I mean, I think that we'd like it. I just don't think it would be up to snuff. I think that I might end up pulling the trigger at some point just because the, the box it comes in is gorgeous and I can do something with that box. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. I, what can I say? I can do something with the box. What can I say? I like to watch a box. <laughs> that means two things. Giddy. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, shit. Sagamore Spirit Distillers Collect... Finished in tequila barrels, everyone. <laughs>